When fading LED fixtures from one color to another, sometimes they will fade through undesirable colors or with fade times that aren't ideal. Color Path allows us to edit each of those details. Let's go take a look. By default, color fades happen in the native space of the fixture. If you want a fade that resembles a fade in a different color space, you can use some color paths. So now I'm going to clear Sneak Enter just to get those changes off the stage. And I'm going to also hide the Tint tool and show my Fade tool. And for this example, instead of having my Split Psych, I'm going to turn that to an Amber Psych. So Group 22, Enter. I'm going to go somewhere in the nice warm Amber. And I'm going to hit Update, Enter. And then I'm going to hit back. And let's watch this psych fade. When I hit go, we're coming from a saturate blue through to a nice amber. So if I grab the channels that I had again, put those on the command line, any channels that are on the command line will show me my fade path in my color picker. So you can see on one side is my starting cue, which is where my channels were in 115. And then it shows you the path that they're going to take through the color space as they fade over to my destination color, which is what's stored in Q116. We can watch that again real quick. I'll just hit back. And when I hit go, you'll see our fixtures fade along that color path. If we look at our path tools, you'll see that no color path is assigned. Again, these fixtures are going to use their native color space, which is to say that because these are RGBA fixtures, each emitter is going to go from its starting point and linearly fade to its end point in Q116. Not only do you get a preview of what that looks like in the color space, you also get a preview ribbon directly below your path selector. And that preview ribbon actually acts as a scrub bar. So if you want to see where your fade is at any point along the way, you can drag your finger to scrub the preview. You also get some preview tools below which allows you to go in your queue time, this happens to be a time of five, your go to queue default time, which is also a default of five. You can run the queue in five seconds, 10 seconds. There are also controls that let you pause, resume, or skip to the end. Let's take a look at what some of our color path options are. If I drop down my menu, you'll see that we have eight that are default in the board. So let's look at our gel path. And our gel path is going to look very similar to our native path because it's a straight line across the color space. When I pick a color path, I get a couple of tools that are related to that math. And in this case, I have tools for in color, out color, and brightness. If I use the tools like delaying my in color, you can watch on the preview ribbon that it's going to stay in the blue side of the fade a lot longer and then more quickly fade to the amber side. This doesn't change the path that it takes through the color space, but it changes the characterization and is no longer linear across the line. I'm going to reset that back. If we're trying to match two incandescent fixtures with saturate gels fading between one another, oftentimes there's a dip in brightness halfway through the fade. But with LEDs, sometimes we go closer to white and there's a pop in brightness. So we have a perceived brightness tool where at the middle of the fade, we can dip that a little bit lower, and that will prevent us from going through quite so much white. I like the way that looks, so I want to store it. We always store color path information in the destination queue. Remember that this isn't a direct path through color space. It's math that allows us to determine how we get from our start color to our end color. This is beneficial because if we change either our start color or our end color, we don't have to worry about redrawing our path. You'll notice in our live channel screen that similar to discrete timing, when we have a color path, we get a red C. And we can press and hold about and hit path, and you'll see which path each parameter is using. Just like discrete timing, I need to store these changes in order for them to take effect. So I'm going to update Q116, which is my destination queue. So let's look at that again real quick. I want to select my channel so I can watch them fade. We'll hit back to sit in Q115. And as we hit go, you can watch your psych. You can see that we fade to amber, but we don't pop up in white. 
because our brightness has been brought down. And this tends to fix a lot of crossfades. Again, because color path is only math, we can put this in a color space that isn't native to the fixture. So for example, I can put this in a cyan, magenta, and yellow fade space. And this gives me tools directly for those parameters. So if I want this to fade a little bit more into the magenta, I can use this tool to maybe delay going into magenta and drag that math through that color space. Let's go ahead and look at a hue saturation space. And because saturation is a parameter that's mapped around the outside of the color wheel, adjusting these parameters adjust how closely and how quickly I hug the outside of that color space. So this is just a different way to change the characteristic of that fade. So let's look at an RGB path. Maybe I'm a little closer to green in my end color, and I don't want this to fade to green when I'm going through the color space. So with an additive fixture, the tough part is green is going to be both in my start queue and my destination queue, so I'm likely to see it. I can avoid this by using an RGB fade, delaying the green, and avoiding the white space. If I have a path that I've adjusted that I like, I can record this and use it again later. All I simply have to say is record path 101 label RGB avoid green, enter, and that'll be usable later. If I want to see my path list, I can just double hit path, and you'll see that that's available for me to use later. If you find that a fixture always has an undesirable fade path, you can set up a path to run on that fixture every time it fades without having to record it in every queue. I can find that in patch. So if I hit patch, in my attributes area, you'll see a color path tile. So for example, my new 101 avoid green, if I type channel 301 in patch, I can assign color path 101, and now it will use that path every time it fades. For today, I'm gonna to go ahead and take that color path off. You're still here? Audio jump. It's over. Go home. Go. Audio jump.